Phoenix Fan Fusion 2024. Woo! Feeling on day one, we're folks. Feeling hot. We're, we're feeling fresh. fruity. We're feeling hot and fresh and a little sweaty, but mostly fruity. We're heading back to the hotel for a little touch up, and then we're going to see if the Hyatts can finally check us in because, oh, it's windy. <laughs> because they've been giving us a time about uh, check in, and we're cutting it awful close to getting ready for our panel tonight. So, Fingers crossed we can actually go to our room, finish unpacking, and then come back and get ready for the FNAF trivia panel. So, wish us luck. We're in the ultra secret back room. Shh. I'm backstage, hiding bodies. Not really, I'm grabbing equipment for my very secret trivia panel. It's gonna be great. I'll see you there. All right, y'all ready? Yeah! All right, that's just a theory. A theory! Thanks for watching. I am very excited to be hosting this again. Last year was a blast, and I'm sure that this one will be just as amazing. And we also have a whole brand new selection of questions, including all of the brand new games that came out last year. If you did attend this panel last year, you're in for a surprise, because every single question is brand new, never before seen. So, it'll be a challenge for all of you. All right, so, before we actually begin the quiz, how many of you have heard, excuse me, how many of you have heard of Kahoot? Nice holding that one out, that was impressive. <laughs> All right, so as people are logging in to Kahoot.it, I am going to explain the prize situation. You didn't think you were going to leave here empty handed, did you? So, if you've never played Kahoot before, then the way it works is you will all compete, be head to head, answering questions for speed and accuracy. Then at the very end, it will let us know who has won first, second, and third place. And you can probably see where this is going, yes? So, the third, second, and first place winners will get to take home a lovely prize. And we're not competing for nothing, there are the lives at stake. I'm a member. Although, I am taking um, new applications for a new accomplice if you know what time it is. If you know, you know. Anyways, as you can see here, we have third on the end, second in the middle, and last but not least, first prize! You will all have to put your biggest Matt Cat skills to the test today. In FNAF 1, what would replace these posters in the East Hall as an Easter egg? Alright, get ready. Question number two. In FNAF 2, what is the name of this lullaby? Listen closely. Question number three. In Five Nights at Freddy's 3, what are the three systems you must maintain to survive? Alright, in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, what does the Fredbear plush say at the end of each mini game? In Sister Location, on which night do you see Ballora get scooped? 
All right, in FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator, what is the name of this ending? Congratulations, you've completed a full week on the job, and you've done it in such a lackluster way. All right, next up we have an ultimate custom night. What is the duration of our night? Question number 10 in FNAF ER L1 and 9. What is the name of the final level leading to the game's ending?
shows that within the history of Fireman's Defense, right, we're used to seeing 8-bit games, mini-games, right, but seeing a fully complete pixelated horror game I think is going to be so cool for FNAF, especially for this story. It's one of the only ones in the entire, like, first four books of the Fast Car Fright series that genuinely got me, like, excited and then terrified. It's just so well written, and I think it's the best one I could have to translate into a pixel horror game. So, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to play it. But, that is all I have for the itinerary, so we have extra time to now discuss theories, Q&A, about the recent projects that maybe came out last year, such as theories on Five Nights at Freddy's Ruin, and theories on Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted, to, because those two games, very explicitly now, seem to connect. So, if you guys have any theories you would like to share with us, and we can bounce back and forth, feel free to raise your hand and we can call on some of you to share. Yes, sir, you had your hand up first. In the group, well not really, but how want to do, in one of the endings, we see uh, yeah, the player character giving uh, the max. Right. So there's a theory, there's also a theory that the, the player character is the, the girl's dad. Yes, yes, we've seen theories that um, the person you are playing as in FNAF Year of Hell 2 is Cassie's father. Because she does mention him in Ruin, so we know that he exists, we just don't know his name or where he is. That's a very good point to bring up. Uh, let's see, let's go down the line, you pick one next. Oh, from the Right there, Blue. Yes. Gregory is controlling the mimic in Ruin. In Ooh, that is a bold one, but I like it. We do know now, or I believe, again, I personally haven't read all of the tales from the Beast Blocks books, but I believe that Patient 46 and the Gregory Theory and him, like, not being a good kid, he's kind of conniving and evil in his own way, whether or not that was before or after he was introduced to the Mimic Virus, he's still been, you know, messing around, kind of sabotaging things, so that is a valid point to bring up. All right. Would you like to pick one? Pick a victim. Pick a victim. person. I mean, a person to uh, share with you. You. Other boy, Rock Chica. Me? Oh, yeah. OK. So I really like the theory that um, the protagonist of Help Wanted 2 is possibly the Bonnie bully because of the Bonnie mask we receive in the game. It's a really, I think it's a really cool theory, and it could end up being true, and it could really add a layer to Story. Right, right. It could be like, oh, this person has still been in this story the whole time. They just haven't been talked about until now. Yeah. Now they're all grown up holding on to that guilt they probably have, like Michael did, because yeah. it was his brother, right? Yeah. So maybe his friends felt guilt as well, because we never really got any more elaboration on how they coped afterwards. So maybe this kid grew up, felt guilty, and for some reason decided, oh, I'm going to work for Fast for Entertainment to cope. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I do think that is a valid point. Everyone can't just breathe with it. Perhaps this is his way. All right, pick one. Pick a victim, Mabel. Oh, dear. <laughs> so many lovely I'm sorry, I can hardly see a boy. Um, how about like, the one in the far back on the right, right side? Yeah. Yes. OK, so I feel like it goes security reach, up one and two, and then ruin, because the Roxy Repair Salon mini game, where you repair her, you give her the mask at the end, and she's in her Somebody, where she did, did help ah, that is a, that is an interesting detail to pick up on. I know that there has been a lot of like back and forth between which game comes first. A lot of people think if we are playing as Cassie in FNAF VR two, um, that it's post elevator ending, which is how we get down there. Um, so that makes sense. But also, it could be the other way around. It could be that FNAF VR help wanted to happen first, as if you know maybe we're playing the dad. Um, and then Ruin follows after where we're playing from the perspective of his daughter. So that is also a very good point to bring up. All right, it's my turn again. Let's go for the spring trap there. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, theory about glitch trap, no offense, but I think <laughs> my, my name was only a little bruised after VR2's <laughs> 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 About the theory that glitch trap isn't William, but it is possibly the movie. Um, yes. Um, I know there is a lot of evidence now to insinuate that ever since the trap came to be, it's been the mimic since then. Um, which 
I do think that that would explain a lot, especially when you transition to security breach. You know that purple spray paint image that's drawn over the endoskeleton and then glitch traps peeking from behind and there's a pair of rabbit ears drawn over top of that endoskeleton when you play the like, weeping angel section, my favorite. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that one. Um, but when you're not grabbing your pants trying to get away from them, you can kind of look over and go, oh, that's an interesting lore point. Um, but if that is the case where the mimic has been glitch trapped and it's always been the mimic since that point and on, it would explain a lot of discrepancies we had in security breach. Yep. So, okay, so to add to the theory that it's the Bonnie Bully, from color and fiction, it, the Cassie has the same exact colors as the Bonnie Bully. Really? Seriously. So we have, and we all know that Scott loves his colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> colors always mean something, whether it's the, the like number of the color shade of pink or purple in a minigame like text, or if it's the color of someone's shirt, you know, it always means something or is drawing a parallel to something. With Scott, there's really no such thing as coincidence. Out of the pit for the last time. Oh, oh, right. That's a dumb name. <laughs> you know, the kid, like, shares a whole chapter just about how much he hates his name for that reason, right? <laughs> You're the kind of kid he's worried about. <laughs> Just a little. everyone, it is Saturday morning. It is approximately sometime between 7 and 8 a.m. I woke up at 6 this morning, um, which is quite early for me, 
But um, we have some stuff to talk about because usually I record this vlog at the end of Friday night, but um, we ended up being a couple hours behind schedule all day yesterday, um, except for the panel. That went really well. If you are just here for the montage, I will pop up the time right now that you can skip to to skip over me talking um, if you'd rather just, you know, skip past the boring stuff. I don't blame you. But for those of you who want to stay and listen to my tales, please grab a seat, some popcorn, and we'll talk about Friday. So yesterday, all in all, I think was a huge success, an overwhelming success. Um, I do have some quite <laughs> not so fun stories to tell about the beginning of my day, um, which had nothing to do with the actual convention. It was just a hotel situation. Um, so I'll tell that fun little story real quick. So my Friday began with some hotel check-in trouble, which we don't usually have, um, but we did this year and I did not necessarily plan for that. However, after just a tiny bit of extra stress, um, the crisis was averted. We ended up in a different room than we asked for, but that was my bad because I think I accidentally booked uh, our room this year through a third party service by mistake. I don't ever usually do that. I'm really good at finding the correct place to place reservations, but I think I was just in a rush this year. And so now we're here, um, so that's kind of not fun. We're in a room uh, with one bed <laughs> and one pull-out couch, but we're making do with what we have, and uh, there's other far more exciting and fun things to be focusing on. Um, but that was really the only, like, hiccup I had yesterday, because with every convention, you know that something has to go at least a little bit wrong, otherwise you know, it's not real life, right? Um, so of everything that could have gone wrong yesterday, I'll take what I can get. This is fine. We, we've we worked it out, so... But yeah, anyways, I want to talk about the experiences that were super fun yesterday. Um, most notably, the FNAF trivia panel, of course. Once again, full house. So many talented cosplayers and excited FNAF fans. And I got to see so many of you come back this year which was so cool. I'm so glad that you guys were able to make it again. Um, so I got to say hi to a lot of you for the second time, and then I got to say hi to a lot of you for the first time because this was your first time coming to see me. Again, not to sound like a broken record, um, I won't go on and on and on, but just, oh gosh, it is, it blows my mind seeing all of you like just so happy and like just genuinely thrilled to to come and say hi to me like i'm just as thrilled if not more like it's it's crazy i always love meeting you guys in person like again you're the entire reason i do what i do so like it, it's just it's phenomenal and heartwarming and absolutely humbling to just be able to stand there and you know shake your hands give hugs see you face to face learn your names learn about you and your cosplays and you know it's you guys inspire me just as much as I might inspire you if not more so like thank you guys for taking the time to show up and wait in line and say hi they, you guys brought me gifts again <laughs> which is so so very sweet um I'm going to take very good care of them and I will be looking through all of them on my next fan mail opening that I record um the panel itself was amazing just like last year in fact we had less technical hiccups this time, but it seemed to work out in the end. I'm sure there were probably, unfortunately, a few people who couldn't get in, um, but I still hope that those people had fun watching and just being in the room and experiencing the, like, ceiling-shattering amount of energy that everyone had once again. Like, I, I will say it over and over again, the FNAF fandom, if you put them in a room like that, gosh, you will not be bored. It is just full of life and full of passion and energy and just excitement and it was it was so fun the the quiz was challenging um i did make it a bit difficult probably a little more difficult than it was last year now that we had two new games to add to the roster of questions i did trick a few people again so it was kind of funny watching them all go ah oh, darn it but i i think that uh, a lot of people hopefully all of them had lots of fun we gave away prizes again, um, but still, it was just so fun watching kids, teens, adults, even people's parents in there were like playing along and answering. And it was just, it's it's just always such a fun and lighthearted and just amazing experience. And I am just, I'm already looking forward to doing it again next year. Nothing really went wrong. I think uh, we even had a lot of spare time this year. We got through the quiz so quick that we were able to do like theory discussion on the new games, all these new theories that are coming up in the world of Five Nights at Freddy's. So yeah, just all in all, 
amazing experience. I'll stop babbling on about it now because you will have probably seen the recording of it already, so you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then after the panel, like I said, meeting all of you guys was probably the best part. Just seeing each one of you in your really, really well done cosplays. Y'all are so talented. It's, it's unfair. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Um, you may have noticed in the montage, you have not seen Glitch Trap come out yet. I plan to bring him out on Friday evening, but because I had not anticipated how many of you would be there to say hi, which is totally fine. Not complaining at all. Um, I much would have rather been doing that than getting dressed up in a stinky weasel suit. Um, but it was just by the time I had gotten through everyone, said goodbyes, um, and walked back to the hotel room, gotten my dinner for the night. It was already 10.30, but fret not, he will be making his appearance today because I'll be bringing him out much, much earlier. So he will have several hours out on the floor dancing around, doing his weasel shenanigans, so. And also today, before the weasel comes out, I will be hosting the Behind the Nerdcore Music panel with the one and only DeHusta. So yeah, I am super excited for that panel today. Um, we have some really cool stuff to show and talk about. All right, I will leave this here because I usually make these videos way too long, um, this part anyways. So I will let you all go so that I can maybe go downstairs, get some breakfast, join the others that are waiting, um, and then I get into to Roxanne. So I will see you all when I am looking like the best, if you know what I mean. See you there. You made it 15 I felonies. Did. I got it. <laughs> I believe it! <laughs> this is the good child. We love this child. She's great. She's and amazing. And I don't throw people down elevators. Yeah, and she doesn't run around destroying people. Huh? huh? Little sh That's okay, I'll do it right back.
I've been into Five Nights at Freddy's ever since I was a little kid, a wee lad. Um, I watched it when Markiplier came out with his very first video, and I have been a part of the fandom ever since. Um, and, you know, FNAF has shaped my career, and also just it's really influenced the people I've met, my dear friends, my the way my family has supported me along the way. Um, so, as silly as it sounds, Five Nights at Freddy's has really positively impacted my life, and it fuels my passion for making things like their core music on top of the cosplay content that some of you may know me for. Um, so I'm really excited to dive into the music stuff today with all of you. Well, and to, to kind of piggyback off that, I feel like for most of us here, FNAF has been a big inspiration. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Where your songs will be used, 
And I know as a, as a music producer, it's like you get scared, like put out a song or something, but put it out. You know, you never know. So I'm going to find it, one person will upload it, and it might be an Exactly. You never know. A lot of times it's just chance. Yeah. That's why you should never give up. Like, for instance, <laughs> my career spawned from an accident. Like, I didn't even mean for it to happen, and then I just went, okay, this is fate. I'm going to do it because it makes me happy, and it's becoming a passion of mine, and now here we are. So always, always just shoot your shot, go for it, try, try again, because you will make it. And yeah. the most important thing is have fun and have love in your heart while you're doing it, most of all. Do it for you. I swear, if you make me cry, I'm going to come up. It's okay, you're going to have tears. <laughs> I can't cry. I and my makeup would be oh, ruined. You're so <laughs> Anyways, back on track. Um, perspective is one of my most, 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 most favorite things to talk about in Nerdcore because we all have comfort characters. We all have our favorite characters. It is so fun to like not be yourself for a minute, and it's almost like going into character. If you write from first perspective from the point of view of a character you love. It is one of my favorite perspectives to write in. I don't do well personally in third person. There are so many good songs though that do that. Um, but my favorite is first person and I love writing for villains. Because, you know, I'm a good guy in real life, right? So it's kind of fun to like step into the shoes of a villain and like play make-believe for a second and come up with these really cool song ideas. What would your favorite perspective be, Jennifer? Well, I would agree. I, um, I somebody told me, I, quite a few actually on social media, were saying how I come across as like the dad of the group. <laughs> um, and, I, and I, I try to be a good person. Um, I'm not typically mean or whatever. And so it's definitely like what you were saying, stepping into the role of a villain, trying to think how they would think or what they would be feeling. So fun. Never any parties. Uh, yeah, 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 there you go. That's a bunch of different ones, yeah. That's true. Um, and I was going to ask you, like, for you with, with stepping into the villain, or, like, what's, what's one of your favorite, like, perspectives that you've stepped into that you've enjoyed? I would say the Avden family, any of them, have always been my favorite to write for. Because despite, like, especially, like, back when we didn't have as much story, so you kind of had this creative room to think about, like, well, how would Michael feel, you know? Or how would William feel? Um, like just recently, one of my favorite songs, which is being 2D animated at the moment, I've been helping with the storyboard with the wonderful and talented Karma Bunny. <laughs> uh, I almost brought it to be the one that I showcased today, but I didn't want everyone to sob. Um, because it is one of those headcanon things that I talked about earlier, where it's William apologizing to his own children. <laughs> and it's from his perspective. So it's like, it's from a villain perspective, but it's a reflective song on how he wishes he could have done better, how he wishes he was more attentive to his own kids, how he wishes he told them that they were enough and acknowledged them and wasn't so soaked into, I know, I cried while I wrote the song. And it's a fictional character, like this is what I'm talking about. There is something so cathartic about writing from the perspective of characters because sometimes you can't make that connection to yourself in real life. Sometimes a good bridge to get to those feelings is by writing for a character that you love, and then it kind of awakens something in you. And it's very almost therapeutic, but it's also a great way to engage with your passion for a character and a fan base and making music. Um, but that is one of my favorites so far. But don't worry, I didn't bring it, I spared you all. It's a very happy song that we're showing today. <laughs> well, as I say, on top of that, I feel, I feel like when well, you're saying like therapeutic, it's so helpful as well to like put yourself in other people's shoes because you get to see different sides without even, I mean, it's, it's a fictional story, but you're still seeing different sides of the story. Um, I, know I know it sounds weird talking about a serial killer or whatever. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't mean it like that. <laughs> but there are, there really are so many different sides to any story. And so it is, it is helpful, I think, in the real world as well, applicable wise. Um, for that. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't what you did by uh, the, what you did, Henry Emily? Wasn't that first person? It is. Yes, it's from Henry Emily's perspective, talking to William and being like, "Hey, I'm gonna send you down to the bad place." <laughs> <laughs> and that hell was also yep. first person. And that is connected. Um, fun fact, actually, there are four songs that are connected that are all part of that same ring. In order, I believe it's. What you did, send me down, and then 
Oh, your reality. Um, because that one starts with a thunder from the previous one. Kind of, I do. <laughs> so many songs. <laughs> I made so many. And this was like, what, 2020, 2019? Um, 2018, actually, for Send Me Down and What You Did. Um, what You Did was actually 2020, I believe. I don't remember. Either way, um, there's an order to them leading all the way up to For You. So it starts with what you did and goes through from like follow you all the way to for you and eventually I'd love to remake all of those songs and then make a mini album and the animations for them will all connect the story. Was, I would love to do that someday. Was more, was more part of that? Like, uh, more is actually an entirely different thing that I don't think a lot of people on my channel know about but I can talk about that later if we have time because that's a whole new can of words. Raise your hand if you know about alts. Okay. Oh, quite a All right. Oh, gosh. Anyways. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Anyways, back on track. Let's talk about what goes into nerdcore music production, or just music production in general. This is kind of all purpose. Um, the first thing, this is kind of, I mean, this isn't like the way you have to do it. I was just kind of reflecting on the steps I usually go through. Um, you can put in your two cents on this, too. I'd love to hear about how you get your process. Go ahead. Take oh, wait, right now? Yeah, oh, right now. I mean, they can read. This is what I do. I choose a perspective, and then you can either write out the lyrics or the melodies. I usually picture the music first. I'm kind of backwards. Um, I'm very much more musical brain than I am lyric brain, so I will make the music first, listen to the track, get inspired, and then I'll usually just sit there and record takes of whatever pops into my head if I'm stepping into character. And then, um, recording vocals, yes, and then the mixing and mastering, which is quite possibly the worst part <laughs> for me. <laughs> but take it away, Dehuster, I'd love to hear about your process. Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm a weird, I'm a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we all know that, yeah. That's nothing new. America! Yeah, yeah. Rumors, sorry. Rumors! Right, so, well, people ask me all the time, like, how do I normally write? I don't know. It's, you know, for example, I, I was in the shower the other day, and I just started... Yeah, it's, no, it's when you're most relaxed. That's like proven fact. Look it up. I promise. Internet is always right. Uh, anyway, that's, that, that's not true. Uh, but the shot, like I was in the shower and I, I was, some beat came to mind and I was beatboxing and I was like, oh, my, it's cool. Like, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, that's sick. And um, actually, that wasn't the same beat, but anyway. Uh, and and uh, and then I, I, I got out of the shower and then um, got ready and went straight to the computer and started putting that beat together. And then it was the baseline. I think that was next. And then some chords. So. It, and sometimes I start with the chords, and then it's um, then it's the melodies. You know, it really just depends. And as an artist, I think what's super helpful is have like have a plan, but don't keep yourself like don't don't stick to just that. Don't uh, be be willing to, to to break outside of that. You know, because um, recently I've had the struggle of thinking I have to stay within a certain. Formula, I guess you want to call it, um, and that can be applied I think, to any art, any any entertainment. And so I think in, in in breaking out of that, you get to be creative, have fun. Like that's what it's all about. If you're not having fun, it's only wrong. <laughs> you know? So that's that's my process. I'll always be like in the shower in a nice little bubble bath, so relaxed. I'm like, I'm not gonna work today. Just doing a day off. And then it's like, no, you're not. Here's a fully composed instrumental. Here's a chorus of lyrics. You're gonna get out of this bath and you're gonna do it right now. And I'm like, all right. Or it's when you're laying in bed at like two in the morning. You're already like dealing with insomnia, sleep deprivation, all of the above. And then you just—that's how home was made. Yeah. I want to ask you guys while we're on the topic, like, what do you guys enjoy the most? with a nerd core. That's yeah, a good yeah, question. Yeah. Like, just it hard, play a game, draw the character you like, and it's going to be like, oh, what can I do with it? Can I be a design for it? Can I dress up for it? Oh, okay. Or like, if I see a character I like, I can just make those characters into my own style. Yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. Exactly. So, uh, for me, my favorite part is on like, uh, just the like, 
raw emotion into the vocals because it almost feels like a bonding experience with like the fictional character. Right. Because you're able yes. to feel like the emotion that they can feel. I bring them to life. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it okay. really enriches their character. Weasel, but uh, yeah, what's that? Uh, oh. <laughs> Weasel. So I like nerdcore music because I'm able to listen to the music while I play the game so I can feel the emotions while I'm playing as the character or playing while while playing the game, or I do cosplay a lot, so it's able to do a cosplay and have a sound that's specifically for them. Okay, right. can I ask, if I raise a hand, um, who does that, listens to nerdcore music while playing the, the game? That's oh, close. That's you know, that's close. I should try doing that. I know, I, I, it's really genius. I feel like in FNAF that might be hard to do because you're like the same. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, what am I different? Is this real me? to our interactive discussion. Um, so, if you could write any song from the perspective of your favorite hero, because first we're going to start with protagonists, um, what would the character be? And give us like two describing words, like would it be sad and slow um, because they're having an emotional moment, or would it be happy and upbeat because they're having a moment of triumph? And then De Houston will take it away with his masterful skills. And he will come up with in lifetime a chord progression to represent what that kind of genre or idea could emulate. Yeah. For example. Wait, describe bombastic. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta speak on my level here. Like, right. uh, energetic. Let's go with that. Uh, Try to get it. Yeah, yeah. And you can, you know, you can turn that into something else yeah. and lead it down the road. That's a good. I like that. That's like he's ready to. To win! Charles Dead! Let's go. Alucard from Halcyon's Dark and Gloomy. Dark and Gloomy. Okay, so. Uh, usually, typically, I love. I love Muse a lot. It's a good band. Uh, they, I love their dark and gloomy, like. So they, like, go in between major and Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Or, or purple, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah sorry. I didn't see the other hand. Um, can, can you write us a little jingle um, about a small pony who happens to know quite a bit about the Manhattan Project? Oh, <laughs>
have three minutes left, so we can do rapid fire questions, maybe. <laughs> so if you have questions for DeHusta or I, raise your hand, and I will let you go ahead and pick our first pick. Though, okay. Since I just uh, have with the curly hair, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, non Ooh. Oh, I freaking love Cody Fry. Absolutely love him. And Jake. Good one. Um, ironically, I listen to a lot of 80s music, um, but I will branch off of that for once and say that I really love Unlike Pluto, Melanie Martinez, or Hosen right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, those are three, so I kind of cheated, uh, but I hope that I answered your question. Um, Sands. <laughs> With a lot of nerd songs, the bridge is often one of the catchiest parts. So what's what's your favorite bridge that you've written? That I've written? Either. Oh, uh, you go first. <laughs> I thought the chorus was the catchiest part. Wait, wait. Yeah, I do agree. I think the bridges though are sometimes what what can like be like a delayed hook. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to answer you because I probably have several in my brain, but for the purpose of being quick, this is one of my favorite ones so far because I love my joy of creation reference that Vanny says. I think that's clever. <laughs> oh, darkest desire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, your turn again. Oh, me again? Yeah. Um, 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 next uh, with the Vanny uh, plushy Um, So, question to both of you: What are your guys' favorite songs that you? <laughs> um, this one right now, just because I'm so hyped for it, but I've also had like 10 other ones I can't talk about yet that I are also like my new favorites. But I'll just pick this one again for the purpose of being quick. <laughs> Mine is a very not well known one. It's called Tender Memory. It's been in a uh, dark revival song. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, let's go with the uh, DJ Music Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Um, when you look at uh, when you look back at your old songs compared to your new songs, garbage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've done reaction videos to my old stuff in my stuff. I'm my own only. But anyways, please no, um, continue. So, um, I don't know if this question might make might make sense or not. But looking back at your new songs and comparing them to your old songs, do you have any uh, tips for beginner artists that are uh, just starting? Your ear will constantly change the more you make music. Um, things that I thought sounded amazing when I was 12, and I am now in my 20s, I'm like, sweetie. But don't be hard on yourself either, because sometimes that is the only way to learn is to make mistakes or think that something sounds good, and then later you go, oh, hey, I've grown. Um, so don't, like, beat yourself up. Just have fun with it, and remember that you're doing it because it brings you joy, while also still being open to criticism and feedback. If your goal is to improve, the, the skill. No, I, I mean, I don't think we have any more time, but that will be my answer as well. One, two, three.
Last day it is. Sister, is this room right here in this alley? Sister, if you see a bitch in the alley with a bad bob, that is not me. Go the other way. Who is this? 